Hi, it's Taryn. And Stella from Nipple University. Stay tuned and today we'll be teaching you how to play hibachi. Coming up. This game is a re-implementation of the 2010 released game Safranito. So now let's learn how to play Hibachi, game designed by Marco Teubner, published by Grail Games. We are using a prototype copy of the game and so the rules and components may not be final. Let's get to the table. Hibachi is an economic dexterity game for two to four players in which players will throw chips towards these bowls of ingredients in order to earn the right to buy or sell ingredient cards as well as setting the prices. Ingredient cards will then be spent in order to complete recipes from a common supply. The game is a race and the first player to complete three recipes is the winner. To set up the game, first assemble the main board in the centre of the table. You will note that it is a dual layer board with a recessed area for you to throw your chips onto. Shuffle up all of the ingredient cards and then deal face up a number of cards equal to the number of players in the game plus two. Then arrange the cards around the board into the slots which correspond to the different ingredients. Shuffle up the recipe cards and then deal face up two cards in a two or three player game and three cards in a four player game. Each player takes six chips in one color and 2,000 yen in starting money. Choose a first player who is known as the head chef and give that player the soy sauce bottle token. You're now ready to play. Each round of hibachi is played in four phases. First will be the throwing phase where players will throw their chips out onto the board in order to try to win ingredients and special effects. After all of the chips have been thrown, you will resolve each of the four special action spaces in order according to the chips that have landed on them. Then you will resolve each of the ingredient bowls that has any chips landing in it, with players first given the opportunity to sell that ingredient and then the opportunity to buy if available. And finally, players will have the chance to claim recipes. There will then be a short reset phase before the next round begins. So now let's look at each step in detail. First we'll look at the throwing phase and to do this we first need to understand our chips. Each player has six matching coloured chips and on one side they are identical. But on the other side each chip shows a number between 100 and 600. These represent money values and will drive the economic portion of the game. Chips are thrown one at a time in turn order, starting from the current head chef. On a player's turn to throw, the player secretly chooses one of their chips and then throws it face down onto the board so that the other players don't know the value of the chip thrown. When throwing a chip, the thrower's hand should not extend beyond the outer edge of the board at any point during the throwing action. If the other players agree that you've reached too far in the act of throwing, then that chip may be removed from the board. It is legal to throw a chip to try to knock another chip out of the way, and in fact that is a key part of the strategy. You may find in the act of throwing that your chip lands face up instead of face down. This is legal and that chip will count, but as you'll see later, it's better for the chips to remain face down because then nobody knows what number you've thrown. A chip that ends up over or on the raised edge of the board is considered out of play and is removed from the table. The thrower does not get to throw another chip to replace it. This phase of the round ends once all players have thrown a certain number of chips, which is three each in a four player game, or four each in a two or three player game. You will not throw all of your chips in a round and it is up to you which numbers you keep in hand. Then you'll proceed to resolving the chips. The first thing to understand about resolving the chips is understanding whether a chip has landed on a space or an ingredient bowl or not. Fundamentally, if you can see any part of the action space or the ingredient through the hole in the center of the chip, then the chip is considered to be on that space. 
Here, this black chip is very clearly on the space. This green one is just on the space. This red one has just missed out. And this black one, although it's touching the edge, is nowhere near being on that space. This holds true across all of the bowls on the board. Any portion of an ingredient which overhangs the bowl is also considered part of that bowl, but the printed shadow of a bowl is not. Any instances of doubt are decided by the current head chef. So, after finishing the throwing phase, the first thing you will do is resolve the four bonus action spaces in this order. First, the bonus chip, then the bonus ingredient, then reserving a recipe, and then the new head chef. Any of these spaces with no chips are skipped. First, resolve bonus throw. Flip over all of the chips and then count up which player has the highest total value of chips on that space. Here, they both have 400. Ties go to the current head chef or the player closest in clockwise turn order from the current head chef. All of the chips are removed from this space and then the player who won that bonus action gets to throw one of their remaining chips onto the board. In this way, getting one more chip than any other player this round. If the newly thrown chip lands on the bonus chip space again, it does not get resolved again. Only one bonus chip can be thrown per round. Next, resolve bonus ingredient. Flip over all the chips and once again determine who has the highest total value of chips with ties determined from the head chef as before. Here, it's red's 500 versus black's 400. The reward for the winning chef is to draw a number of ingredient cards blindly off the top of the ingredient deck equal to that player's single highest chip on that space divided by 100. So here it would be three cards for this 300 chip. The player looks at them, chooses one to keep, takes it for free and then puts the other back onto the bottom of the ingredients deck. Then clear the chips off the board. Next resolve the reserve ingredient space. Again, reveal the player's chips and whoever has the highest total value, again breaking ties from head chef, draws the top recipe card from the recipe deck and then looks at it and keeps it face down. This is a reserved recipe which only that player may now complete. Finally resolve the new head chef space. Flip over all the chips and again whoever has the highest value with ties broken from the current head chef becomes the new head chef. That player takes the soy sauce bottle and will serve as the head chef for the rest of this round. But do note that head chef will rotate again before the start of the next round. If no player successfully threw into this space, then the current head chef retains it for the rest of the round. Next, you will resolve each of the nine ingredients that has at least one chip lying in it. The head chef chooses the order in which those ingredients are resolved. Resolving an ingredient is done in two steps. First sales and then purchases. First flip over all chips that landed in that bowl and add up the total value. Here it's 1300 yen. All players who are holding at least one of that ingredient card already in hand, and this includes players who have no chips in that bowl, may now sell as many of this ingredient as they wish for that price, in this case 1300 yen. Any ingredients sold this way are placed in the discard pile in exchange for the money. If the seller had any chips in that pot, suppose black were the one doing the selling, then that player would have to remove all chips from that bowl. A player who sells but has no chips in the bowl obviously does not have to do this. After all sales are complete, Players who still have chips in that bowl may purchase that ingredient as long as there are some ingredients available on the side of the board. This is done in chip value order. So players separate their colors of chips and determine their total value of chips in the pot. Here red has 700 and blue has 100. The player with the highest total value with ties broken from the head chef as usual now has the option to buy one of that ingredient for the total price of that player's chips in the pot. So here, red could buy one of these three meat for 700. 
If the player chooses to make the purchase, then return the money to the bank and take one of those ingredient cards into hand. There is no limit on the number of ingredient cards a player may have. Alternatively, the player may choose to pass on the ingredient, in which case they keep their money. Either way, that player now removes their highest valued chip from that bowl. Then repeat the whole process. Determine who has the highest value of chips in the pot, and then that player has the option to buy the next one for the value of their total chips. Here, they both have 100, so whoever was earliest in turn order would have the chance to buy some meat for only 100 yen, before again removing their chip. This continues until there are either no more chips in that bowl, or no more ingredients of that type left to buy. Once a bowl is finished, you'll move to the next one and resolve it in the same way, starting with sales and finishing with purchases. Finally, proceed to the cooking recipes phase, in which each player takes one turn in the current turn order from the head chef. On their turn, a player may resolve up to one of the recipes available in the common supply by discarding the three ingredients showing on that recipe and then taking it into their collection, and additionally may resolve up to any number of reserved recipes that were taken from the reserve recipe special action. Once again, by discarding the shown ingredients to the ingredient discard pile. You may resolve from one or the other or both but you may not resolve more than one from the common display. Play then passes to the next player clockwise who does likewise from the recipes that are remaining on the board. These are not replenished until the end of the round. Once all players have finished this phase, then replenish the recipe row to its starting value, which was three in a four player game, or two in a two or three player game. Hand the head chef token to the next player clockwise. Retrieve any chips that you've forgotten to retrieve from the main board and draw new ingredient cards again equal to the number of players in the game plus two Arranging them into their corresponding slots These will be added to any which were unpurchased at the end of the previous round You'll then start again with the next throwing phase when one player completes a third recipe, then the game ends immediately and that player is the winner. Remember that resolving recipes is done in turn order and so being the head chef in the final cooking phase can be critical to victory. And that's how to play Hibachi. We hope that you enjoyed the video. At the time of filming, Hibachi is soon to be going to Kickstarter and so we'll put a link in the description below when it's live so you can check it out there. If you enjoyed this video, please help us by hitting that like button. Subscribe to us. You can also hit the meeple in the corner to do so and hit the bell icon so you'll be one of the first to know when we have new videos. You can also follow me on Instagram for my board games journey. And finally, if you have any questions, comments or feedback, please leave them in the comment section below. Until next time.